latter house ministers where the glory is expected. Hallelujah. We're going to stay right there. Amen. We want you to stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I already feel the presence of God this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Right where you are, just lift your hands. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Hallelujah. Glory is already here on this morning. Is already here this morning Jesus that means everything that you were desiring everything that you need everything that goes beyond the realm of human possibility is available right now Jesus the atmosphere is already conducive There's some things you've been wondering if it was going to happen. There's some things you say, God, this is going to take a miracle. Well, guess what? God still works miracles. The word of God tells me that God does not change. So the miracle that you received years ago, decades ago, is from the same source It's causing miracles to take place in atmospheres like this. Can you feel his presence? The Father is already here. All you got to do is reach up and touch him. Love on him. Feel him. religious experience has had us handcuffed causing us to think and believe that certain things have to take place in the program before we can feel God's presence no God is already here the oil that you were looking for is already here everything is not always a run and a shout and a dance but sometimes it's just basking in his glory. Oh, we thank you. In this moment, just let God know who he is to you. Let God know what he means to you. This is personal. This is intimate. Hallelujah. He is God Almighty. He is Alpha and Omega. He is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He is our Lord. He is our Savior. Thank you, Jesus. He's our healer. He's our strength. Somebody's been praying for strength. Guess what? God is that strength on today. And that strength is among you right now. He is our restorer. Some people may have felt broken down in shambles. But God is restoring right now in this place. Can we come into agreement, amen, in our worship on this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord, we lift our hands to you, God. In humble submission to you. Hallelujah. Just pour out of your spirit on this morning. I'm here to decree and declare church is never going to be the same again. Godliness has been canceled in the name of Jesus. We're about to walk in power. We're about to walk in glory. Atmospheres like this is what's going to cause us to walk in new realms and new dimensions like you have never seen before.
right now, at this time, we're going to ask Deacon Lane to come. We want you to stay right where you are and open us up with our prayer. Lead us in our invocation. Following that, we'll have our worship team to come. And they're going to shift this atmosphere even the more in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father God, we come. Hallelujah. Father God, we come this morning to lift you up, Father God. We thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for another day that you have made. Yes. Now, Father God, we ask you to reach out on our airways in our ministry, dear Heavenly Father, and start anointing, dear Heavenly Father. Anoint, dear Heavenly Father, from the top of our heads to the bottom of our feet, that we can give you the glory, the honor that you deserve, Father God. Father God, there's so many out there that's sick, dear Heavenly Father. We ask for healing on today, dear Heavenly Father. Just come into our homes, dear Heavenly Father. Enter into our lives, dear Heavenly Father. Our unsaved ones, dear Heavenly Father, give them a desire to want to be saved, Father God. Let them seek your face more, Father God. Let them know that it's you, dear Heavenly Father, that opened the doors, dear Heavenly Father, that you made ways out of no way for them, Father God. Let them give you the glory, dear Heavenly Father. And we thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for families on today, dear Heavenly Father. Can minister to the families, Father God. Get entwined with them, Father God, and let them know that it's you that gets the glory, Father God. Father God, a special prayer for our men in the world today, dear Heavenly Father. We thank you for the men, dear Heavenly Father. But let us step up to the plate, dear Heavenly Father, for where we are supposed to be as men in the families, dear Heavenly Father, in this world, Father God. Father God, bless this ministry on today, dear Heavenly Father. Bless the speaker on today, dear Heavenly Father. Let the word that comes out of their mouth, dear Heavenly Father, be lifting you up, Father God. Let him have the courage, dear Heavenly Father, when she come up, dear Heavenly Father, that she know that it's you, dear Heavenly Father. Let her sit down, Father God, and lift you up, Father God. We'll thank you for what you're going to do in this ministry, dear Heavenly Father. We thank you for what you're going to do over the world, dear Heavenly Father. We just thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for so many things, dear Heavenly Father, that we have, dear Heavenly Father, that you have done for us, dear Heavenly Father. We just want to give you glory today, dear Heavenly Father. We want to lift you up, Father God. We want to invoke your presence in this house, dear Heavenly Father. We worship you in right now, Father God. Father God, just take control of everything today, dear Heavenly Father. Father God, we thank you for the heat, dear Heavenly Father. Someone may be out there without air, dear Heavenly Father. Let someone touch the heart of someone, Father God, that they will go to some senior citizen or someone home, dear Heavenly Father, and furnish them with air conditioning, with fans, dear Heavenly Father. We thank you on today, dear Heavenly Father, for life, strength, dear Heavenly Father. We thank you for what you're going to do upcoming next week, Father God, on our jobs, dear Heavenly Father, in our homes, dear Heavenly Father, in our relationship, Father God. Continue to mend relationship, Father God. We thank you for a relationship, Father God. Continue to bless our pastor on today, Pastor Brian Williams, dear Heavenly Father. Continue to bless the first family, dear Heavenly Father. Continue to cover them in the blood, dear Heavenly Father. Wrap them up in your arm, Father God. Minister to them, Father God. And we appreciate them, dear Heavenly Father. We thank you for having coverage over our heads, dear Heavenly Father. We thank you for the place, dear Heavenly Father. We thank you for the vision, dear Heavenly Father, that you have set forth, dear Heavenly Father, in him. Continue to bless, dear Heavenly Father. We worship and adore you, dear Heavenly Father. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father God. We continue to bless and lift you up today, dear Heavenly Father. We feel your presence in this room right now, Father God. Invoke your presence, dear Heavenly Father, in each and every one heart today, dear Heavenly Father. Continue to protect our mind, dear Heavenly Father. Protect it from the enemy, dear Heavenly Father. We just thank you, Father God, for what you're doing, dear Heavenly Father, what you're going to do, what you have already done, dear Heavenly Father. Continue to bless, dear Heavenly Father. 
Continue to bless finances, dear Heavenly Father. Continue to bless ways, dear Heavenly Father. Open doors, dear Heavenly Father, that was closed, Father God. We thank you in advance, Father God, for what you're going to do and what you have already done. And continue to move, dear Heavenly Father. Continue to sweep this world, dear Heavenly Father. Continue to move into Heavenly Father. Rule out evil, dear Heavenly Father. Overpower anything that the enemy have set, dear Heavenly Father. Any trap that the enemy tried to do, dear Heavenly Father. We know you have all power, Father God. And that you can move it out, dear Heavenly Father. You move mountains, Father God. So we know that you can do these things for us, Father God. We'll continue to give you glory and honor, dear Heavenly Father. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, somebody. The Spirit of the Lord is moving in this place on this morning. Hallelujah. Can you feel him? Come on, what we do when the presence of the Lord is in the house? Come on, we got to give him honor. We got to give him praise. We got to give him glory. Because he's in the room. And when he comes, he comes to show out. Come on, just say, say tell the Lord, have your way on this morning. Have your way this morning. Hallelujah. God, we thank you. Hallelujah. Come in like a mighty rush. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, Revelations 19 and 1. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. God is wonderful. Somebody excited about that? Hallelujah. The King of Kings. The Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. He's wonderful. Come somebody say he's done great things. Great things. He keeps on doing great things. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. I think I need to hear another hallelujah. 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 Come on, praise. Can you say hallelujah? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Woo. Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, yeah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. But mighty way, like a rushing of a mighty way, come and fill our hearts again, like a rushing of a mighty way. The rushing of a mighty wind, like the rushing of a mighty wind, come and fill our hearts again, like the rushing of a mighty wind. Like the rushing of a mighty wind, like the rushing of a mighty wind, come and fill our hearts again, like the rushing of a Let it overflow. 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 Let it let it overflow like a river that has overflowed. Like a river that has overflowed. Come and fill our hearts once more. Let 
Team, I want you to come back. I want Pastor to anoint us. She's got some water over there. You know, as we were singing, the presence of God was just moving, moving. And I don't know that you, if you know that, it's not about a sound. It's about the sound. The sound from heaven. The sound that touches God's ear. What touches God's ear is our faith. Faith in what we're singing. Faith in what we're living. Faith in what we're feeling. But most of all, faith in what he's doing. One thing that we must supply that gives God gasoline, if I can say it this way. Faith moves God. Faith moves God. And sometimes we're young together. We're growing together. 
And sometimes, even though I've been singing for a while, sometimes intimidation. Sometimes we get timid. Worrying about a sound. And forgetting about the sound. So that ends today. God says it ends today. We're going to be free. Yes. We're going to be powerful. We're going to be holy. Yes. But most of all, we're going to be obedient. Come and know us best. Hallelujah. Come on, everybody in the audience, just be praying and lifting us up to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Pastor's right. We're going to stay right there. Hallelujah, God. They're going to be all right. <laughs> they got to get used to people. Thank you, God. But this is a breaking season for them, too. Because even little children, y'all know they, they have to go through things. And even with them being shy and timid around others, we decree and declare on this morning that same anointing is broken. It is breaking that over them on today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, God. Hallelujah. Indeed, it is an honor to stand before you on this morning. Woo. Elder Freeman was so on with that, with the praise team. I was sitting there, and as they were singing, and they were singing the first song, I said, look at them. Look at them. I said, you, did anybody see what just happened? Mm -hmm. And there was a newness that was about them and it fell in line with the sermon for the day god always got a way of using the praise team to let me know y'all on point you on point you on point with what is going on in the word that he's given so on this morning yeah yeah it is not the same hallelujah it is not the same thank you god hallelujah god hallelujah god it has to be new it's gonna be new we decree that it is new Hallelujah, God. So on this morning, we're just going to go to God in prayer. And we're going to say, Father, we just thank you for this day, God. God, we thank you, God, for the 
opportunity, God. God, to stand before your people, God. God, to bring forth the word that you have given, God. God, let it come through with clarity, God, with seasoning, God. Let it take root, God, the way that it's supposed to, God. God, allow me, God, to step back, God, that you may stand forward, God. God, that your word, God, that is given, God. God, that it will be the word, God, that is needed, God. God, for this house, not only this house, God, but for those, God, who may be viewing online, God, those who may come across this message at a later date, God. God, let it be, God, the word that saturates them, God. God, that allows them, God, to know, Father God, God, that they can do anything and all things through Christ Jesus, God. God, let it be a word, God, that is fulfilling and sustaining, God, of where they are and where they will go, God. Now, Father, we God, for this day, God, we pray, God, that on today, God, when we leave, God, we will never, ever, ever, God, be the same, God. In Jesus' name, it is so. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So on this morning, we're going to get on into our word because I'm just going to let that just right there. And we're going to go to a very familiar passage. And that passage is going to be coming from Isaiah 43, 18, and 19. It is one of our favorite scriptures. When people hear this scripture, they're like, yeah! <laughs> but on this morning, we're going to take a little different perspective on it. Hallelujah. But still stay within the context of what the scripture is. So again, Isaiah 43, 18, and 19. I'm going to first read from the Amplified Version, and then I'm going to do the message, because the message kind of gives us a whole lot more. The message be for our people. It be for us as who don't like to be obedient sometime, and we be acting like we don't know what the word means. He sent you the message if you pretend like you don't know. Because the message going to break it down. All right. So the Amplified Version reads, do not remember the former things or ponder on the things of the past. Listen fully. I am about to do a new thing. Did anybody hear the sound of the praise team? Listen carefully. Now it will spring forth. Will you not be aware of it? Did you not see it, hear it, and feel it? I will even put a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Now, we're going to go to that wonderful part in there in the message. And the message reads, forget about what's happened. Don't keep going over old history. Be alert. Be present. I am about to do something brand new. It's bursting out. Don't you see it? There it is. I'm making a road through the desert, rivers in the badlands. And I'm going to read all the way to 28 in the message because it gives us a little bit more. Wild animals will say thank you. The coyotes and the buzzards because I have provided water in the desert, rivers through the sun-baked earth, drinking water for the people I chose, the people I made especially for myself. A people custom made to praise me. And 22 says, but you didn't pay a bit of attention to me, Jacob. You so quickly tired of me, Israel. You wouldn't even bring a sheep for offerings in the worship. You couldn't be bothered with sacrifices. It wasn't that I asked that much from you. I didn't expect expensive presents, but you didn't even do the minimum. So stingy with me, so close-fisted, yet you haven't been stingy with your sins. You've been plenty generous with them, and I'm fed up. But I say, yes, I am the one who takes care of your sins. That's what I do. I do not keep a list of your sins. So make your case against me. Let's have this out. Make your arguments. Prove you're in the right. Your original ancestor started the sinning, and everyone since then has joined in. That's why I have disqualified the temple leaders, reputed Jacob, and discredited Israel. <sighs> That's a tough word right there. Started out and we was going real good. And we was like, he doing a new thing. 
he doing it, he doing it. And then he took us back a minute. And he said, listen, I'm doing this, but you done missed me a while back because you didn't do what I told you to do the first time. So our scripture references a few things, but I'm going to go ahead and give you what our subject is and what our, our other subject could be. Our subject is your new is now. Subtopic, letting go of the old but make sure you've done what God told you to do. So, in this scripture text, the prophet Isaiah basically says to the people, listen, God says he's doing something new. He asked a question of them. He said, can you not perceive it? Do you not see what he's doing? And then he goes on to tell them, listen, not only is he doing a new thing, but it is now. You're waiting for something new, but God is saying, I'm already doing it. But you're missing it because you're in the things of the past. And while you're in the things of the past, I've already told you to forget the former things. I told you, do not even think of those things because you're going to miss me if you stay in that place. I'm pulling you out of past things, past thoughts, past things you did, past rituals. I'm pulling you out of those past behaviors. I'm telling you to go this way, but because you're so used to going that way, you're missing what I am doing. So when he says forget those things, he doesn't mean that you're going to forget them because they're going to be there. But what he means is you're not to dwell on them. They should not become your present. In the message, it says be in the present. How about we be where we are when we're supposed to be there without having other things on our mind? I think the songwriter back in the 70s said your mind is here with me, but your, your body's here with me, but your mind is on the other side of town. So you can be physically somewhere, but mentally somewhere else. And God is saying on this morning, he is sick of us being present, but not being where we're supposed to be. He's saying that he is sitting right among us and we miss him because we're thinking about what we got to do after church. We're thinking about where we going to eat. We're thinking about what happened on yesterday. Thinking about so-and-so for work tomorrow, how we going to cuss them out tomorrow. While we're quiet, we're thinking about how we're going to deal with that situation that came up last night. And God is saying, I'm in the midst of you right now doing a new thing. And if you be here with me while I am doing it, you will not miss it. So I've gone into a tangent a little bit before I started with where I wanted to be. So y'all know by now, I like to do definitions because I want to make sure we all together. I'm a dictionary. So the word new, it means having been seen, used or, un or known for a short period of time. Being other than the former or old or made to become fresh. Keep in mind, made to become fresh. Old persisting from an earlier time, distinguished from an object of the same kind by being of an earlier date. So something can be the same, but it's older. He says, and now means at the present time or moment. It is used with sense of present time weakened or lost to introduce an important point or indicate a transition, a transition as of ideas, and to express a command, request, or emanation. So in the world that we live in, we know that if you're not keeping up with what we call mainstream society, you can miss something real quick. If you don't stay up to date with what's going on around you, you will still be using the latest, the last version of an app and wondering why your phone keep ticking and talking and they keep doing all this skipping. And every time you're looking at something, this. And then you look at your phone and it says it needs to be updated. That is the same thing with us. How many of you all remember MySpace? If you remember MySpace and you just told your age. 
God is good. That means you're 40 and older, probably, if you remember MySpace. MySpace was the place to be at one point. It was the place of social connecting. It was the place that a lot of people caught up with other people. It was the place that people hooked up, looked up, and was up, and then was back down. MySpace was supposed to be MySpace. It was a place online that people went and wrote their minds. It was where they put their pictures up, put what music you was listening to. And everybody connected. But something happened with MySpace because it was very short-lived. And most people wondered what happened to MySpace. Well, I happened to be reading an article on Investopedia. And it said uh, before Facebook became popular, there were a number of social media networking sites that had captured the attention of its users for at least a time. However, lack of strategic planning, poor timing, or just plain bad luck contributed to the failure of those social media sites to achieve staying power. And MySpace was overtaken by who? Facebook <laughs> in popularity because of its oversaturation of advertising, slow load times, and in and a loss of innovation where features were concerned. What does that example have to do with this scripture? So MySpace lacks some things, which calls its users to go over to Facebook. And people begin to say, wow, that little Facebook right here got some things that MySpace ain't got. But the makers of MySpace failed to see it. They failed to see what the people needed. They failed to realize people didn't want to just stream music. They wanted to do other things. There was a bigger plan and a better way to do things, but they missed it. They were upgrading this and losing this. They were still stuck in what brought the users. And they didn't upgrade to keep the users. So what this means is when we do not entune ourselves with God, when we do not get in the presence of God in the present time, then that means we can miss what he's doing. God is trying to update us and tell us it's new. And we're stuck in the what happened. We're stuck in that worked for me. That's how I got here the last time. And that is how the door was open the last time. And God is saying the last time was the last time that I was going to do it like that. Now I'm moving you into a place and a space where it's bigger than what you had. He said my space was too little. So now I need you to come into the Facebook, the face of God. I need you to understand that the only way way that you are going to prevail in this season. The only way that you are going to know what is springing forth in this season and you don't miss it and you don't count that piece of grass and say that's a piece of grass when it's really a baby tree coming up with fruit on it and you cut it down with your lawnmower and then you put some weed killer on it because you think it's weeds and God is saying that's not what it is because if you got in my face, if you were in my presence then you would see that that is not what it is. It's a tree I'm bringing up and out of that tree is going to bring fruit and when the famine comes, you won't be hungry. You'll have food to eat. But when we do not get into the face of God, we miss it. We're no longer being able to have information downloaded to us. We're missing the things that are innovative. God is trying to give you an idea that brings in what it is you've been praying for. God is trying to take you to a place where you will network and meet the people who will help caterpillar you to the next level. But we don't want to go where the new people are. We want to stay where the old people are. We don't want to go into the new atmosphere because a new atmosphere means that we got to show them who Jesus is. So we don't want to change our attitude. We don't don't want to go into the next level where God tells us shut your mouth in this level instead we want to go in and we want to be the big talker and we want to tell them what we know when God is trying to tell you listen to what they know because what they know you're gonna and you're gonna use it for my kingdom you're gonna grow with it 
you're going to move with it. Cannot you perceive it? Do you not see it? No, these are not the group of people that you're used to being around. Yeah, they cuss and they argue and they fight, but let me tell you, they got some street knowledge. They know things that you don't know. They know people you don't know. When the Bible says that the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the righteous, how you going to get it if you don't know no wicked people? Everybody you know holy. Everybody you know they dress is dragging the flow. You don't know nobody with a tight dress on. You don't know nobody that wear their hair all the way down here and it's pink and yellow and green. Instead, we want to know the people who are like us, who are like us. We perceive a certain group. We perceive a certain thing. And God is saying, you need to perceive what I'm doing. He says, because had you done the last thing I asked you to do, you would know what I'm doing now. What is the last thing, the last thing? <laughs> For some of us, we expect that new is going to be this crescendo that's grandioso. In the music world, the crescendo is going to be whenever you get to that loud point in the music. And it's going to be the loudest point where it's, ah! When he's saying, no, 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 this is a poco. Poco a poco. I used to do music, so, yeah. So Ms. Erica shaking her head like, yeah, yeah, that's what it is. That means little by little, gradually, it's going to build up. So we're expecting that when the new thing comes, it's going to announce itself. And it's going to make a grand entrance. And it's going to come chasseying in. I'm new. Hey, you been waiting on me? It's not going to come in like that. It's going to come in. And he said it's going to spring forth. That means it comes up from somewhere, which means it started at the bottom. Now we're here. Now your whole team winning. That's what that means, which means we got to be alert. We got to be vigilant. We got to have our eyes open, not your natural eye, but the eye of God, your spiritual eye. That means that we're looking when no one else is looking. We're praying when no one else is praying. We're fasting when no one else is fasting. We're seeking God when no one else is seeking him. That means pastor doesn't have to tell us it's time to go on a, a fast. That means when that little flesh and you start raising up, because mine did this week. I was at work one day. I was like, boy, I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> I heard that little Gracie corner in my head as she was singing, I'm ready, 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 ready. I was like, yeah, Gracie, we ready. Let, well, I ain't ready to do the alphabet song, no. Uh, we gonna do other alphabets. And I had to go in the door, in the office and shut the door. And I said, okay, God, I ain't had no breakfast yet. You want me to just wait and eat? You, I'm gonna wait and eat. And I'm gonna get me some word and I'm gonna read and I'm gonna sit right here, sit my happy hips down. Because I'm missing something. Because if I move too quick, I'm going to miss what you're doing. If I say something too quick, I'm going to slide past what you're saying. So the best thing to do on the day is to sit down and look for what you're looking for. So I can hear what you're saying. And that's where we sometimes have to be in that new. The new isn't always a big thing. Sometimes the new that God may have for you just means waking up at a new time to pray. The new that God has right now might mean taking a different route from work so he can show you that piece of land that you've been praying about. The new means sometimes stop answering the phone for everybody. The new might mean the new you want in your spouse, you got to be it. Sometimes the new might mean spending more time with your family. Sometimes the new might mean that it's time for you to put something up that God said was over with a long time ago. But we think the new is going to come in and it's going to be this big thing when sometimes it's just a small change. It is a mind change. The new sometimes is the new that begins in you. It means that I surrender my all 
to you. And everything I give to you withholding nothing. That's why when he said, forget the former things, forget about it. What is it doing for you? In the words of Dr. Phil, how that working? How is it working for you? Because if the old isn't working for you, then God is saying, you need to be in the new. You need to be in the now. You need to be in the right now because where you are, I'm no longer there. I've moved. I believe, who was it? Moses. Was it Moses that said, I don't want to be anywhere that your presence is not. And we continue sometimes to be in places that God's presence is not. And it's because we're so used to it. It's a familiar place, a familiar spirit, the familiar habits that keep us comfortable and laxed. And we just stay there because this works for me. You know, I get up at 6 o'clock. I got one hour to brush my teeth, wash my face, get me some coffee, get on the road and be, be to work by 8 because I'm going to leave the house by 7. And God says, mm -mm, I need you to be up 5 o'clock. I need you to dedicate this week to me. I need you to be up at five because I got something I need to tell you that's getting ready to go down. I got some words I need to speak to you. I got some things I need to show you. And because we're so used to doing what we did, that one hour that we could have gave him for five days, a month later, something else comes up. And we remember, God, God told me to get up. I should have did it. He said, you didn't do the little thing I asked you to do. He said, I didn't ask you for much. I didn't ask you to go and sacrifice yourself on the cross like my son. I didn't ask you to go out and bring me all your money. I didn't ask you to do any of that. I asked you for the bare minimum. And because you were disobedient in the bare minimum, you have now missed where I'm at and what I'm doing. And now we're playing catch up. And now we're at the moment where we're saying, God, please, God, please, God, please. And God is saying, I told you a long time ago, but because I'm a kind God and because I'm a loving God, I'm not going to hold it against you. I'm not going to keep writing your sins down because you know what you did. And some of us don't even know what we did because we've been doing it for so long. Our family's been doing it for so long that we think that it's right. And God says, no, he said at the end in the message, your ancestors started this sinning and you joined in it. They started the disobedience. They started disobeying me. They started doing what they wanted to do. They started, let's all wear red to church on Sunday and ain't nobody feeling nothing. Ain't nobody feeling nothing. Let's fill the pews. And all we did was have people sitting down and none of them were getting up giving him praise. He said that we started this. Your ancestors started this. And then you joined up in it and came on in there and said, yeah, today, y'all know every fourth Sunday in August, we got to have cookies and we got to have, uh-uh, uh-uh, they had macaroni and cheese on that menu and, and you got to have the five cheeses in it. And God said, you got so caught up in that that you missed the fact that I was telling you it wasn't about none of that. It was about my glory. It was about me being fed. It was about me being filled in you. It was about me entering the temple. So now all the temple leaders is out. He said, I'm sick of it. God says on today, I'm not having it no more. We're not doing it no more. And if you want to keep doing the same thing, you're going to get the same results. So don't come to me crying about it when I gave you the remedy to it because I'm going to let you cry until you go back and get it right. That means sometimes we got to go back and repent for things. That means sometimes we got to go back and repent for our ancestors doing things. That means we got to go back and start breaking things in generations and saying, God, forgive us, God. We didn't know any better, God. But, God, I know better. And from this day forward, it is better. It's going to be what you say do. But because we get stuck in the former, in the former thing. We can't break free. And we can't free anybody else. And instead of the new thing springing forward, 
we're seeing old stuff. We're seeing dead grass, but at least it's grass. We're seeing trees with no fruit, but at least they got leaves for shade. We're seeing water. Well, the pond ain't full, but at least it ain't empty. We're seeing these things and we're excusing why they're not functioning like they should. We're excusing our behaviors. Like for me, well, God, at least I got church by 1033. And he was like, but you said you was going to be there at 1015. Well, God, you know, work harder. I use my own self in the kitchen. There are things that God has been trying to get us to get to do. Because if we don't do it, we're going to miss what he's doing. We're missing the now because we're still in the past. And when you remain in those past things, you can't move forward. In the Bible, the word new is used 150 times in the King James Version. And almost every time it's used, you see before or after the word new, former, or old. There's a scripture where he says, I will give you a new heart, and I will remove your old heart to give you a, a heart of flesh and he's going to take away the stony heart. So in order for something new to come, something old has to leave. As there is the scripture that also talks about how new wine can't be poured into old wine skin because it'll burst. And I believe in the message version, he said, don't you see it bursting out? It's bursting out. It's trickling down in front of us and we're missing it. We're missing it. Saints, we missing it. Are you tired of missing it? I'm tired of missing it. I'm tired of being late for the party. Party about over with. And all the good food picked over. And you can't get nothing but the slim pickings. I like to eat. I'm tired of missing it. After a while, we should be at a place where we're like, God, I don't want to miss it. I don't want to miss what you're doing. I don't want to miss what you're saying. Because if you miss it, guess who else you missed it for? Those who are connected to you. You just missed it. So now you missed it for your wife. You missed it for your children. You missed it for your children's children. You just missed it for that coworker you've been praying for. Isn't it amazing? We just missed it because we failed to do what God has said to. But God is gracious. And he tells us how we can get it right. He already told you who started it. Now you need to finish it. That's basically what he said. You know how when people make us bad sometimes and we say they started, but I'm going to finish it. You might have started, but I'm going to finish it. He said, listen, your people started this. You joined in it. Now you need to finish it. You need to fix it. I believe it was on a, the, 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 the game Street Fighter. Yeah, that's old too, Street Fighter. They had one on there and they said, finish him. And more to come back. That's what it was. More to come back. He said, finish him. And they went in and was like, do, 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 do. And then, yep, and put that elbow down. Boom. And it was finished. That's what we got to do, saints. We got to be ready to go into the war and finish it. We got to be ready to go in, hands up, and say, you know what? Teach my hands to war. Teach my hands to war so I don't war with my mouth and shut something down that you're trying to open. Teach my hands to war appropriately, not like this. Not like that. 
but teach my hands how to war. Teach me how to go before you, God, in the wee hours of the morning. Teach me how to go before you in my vehicle and turn the radio off. Turn off everything I'm listening to and say, God, if you're going to speak, speak. When will we be like Samuel? When he was there, he was waiting. And Elijah, he told me, he said, I thought, did you call me? He said, I didn't call you. He came back again. Did you call me? I didn't call you. Third time, he said, did you call me? He said, son, I know what it is. The next time you hear that voice, tell him, say, father, I hear you. Your servant hears you. Speak. That is us. We have to be at the point where we are ready to receive what he's speaking. Because when he speaks, he does not speak just to be heard. He speaks to be obeyed. And we have to become so obedient to what he's saying that we know the new is now. We aren't waiting on a new thing. We're no longer waiting, saints. It's right now. It's now. It's standing before us. It's looking us in the face. And it ain't me. Let me put that there. Ain't me. It's standing before you. And it's like, Boom, I'm right here. You keep missing me. You keep missing me. Stop missing me. Stop missing me. Because you're listening to everyone else. Other voices are louder than my voice. Other places are bigger than my house. Other things are bigger than my ministry. We got to get back to the heart of God. And the heart of God is for us to be in his presence, to be kingdom-minded, to win souls, to be glad to see others come to him. And not only be glad to see them come, but be glad to keep them. We got to be willing to share the word of God. We can no longer be timid in what God's called us to do. We can no longer be those who just stand by and let things happen. We have to cry aloud and spare not. That means we have to call right, right, and wrong, wrong. That means we can't stand by and just shake our head and say, mm, look at them. Help if you can. And if you can't, don't join in the conversation. Go pray. It's simple. These are the new things that God's talking about. Come out of the gossip click. Come out of those who sit around and point at other people and say, look what they doing. And we don't pray for them. Come out of the telling people, I'm going to pray for you and walk away and forgot what it was they said. We ain't sent up not one prayer. I'm going to tell y'all what, Facebook be hurting me. I don't go on that that often. Because people be on there, they be like, don't ask no questions, just say prayers. Okay, well, all right, then you ain't got to be so aggressive, but. And then you see people put up the hands like this. Somebody said to me, them ain't praying hands. They said, them is high fives. <laughs> I said, you know how many people that put up the praying hands thought they were praying hands. I said, and they high fives. Okay, Facebook, y'all heard that. Them is high fives. Stop it. So with that being said, in this new that's going on now, we got to be in connection with God. And we got to be willing to change our ways for his ways. We got to be willing to submit our will for his will. And not only do we will that, but when he gives a directive, we got to do it. And we can no longer afford to wait five years to question or five minutes to even say, well, God, how you want me to do it? We got to be willing to do it with not all of our questions being answered. Sometimes doing it is the starting point to how it's going to finish. You see, Saul, who became Paul, there was a new thing that happened in his life. It took three days for him on the road to Damascus. He became blind. He didn't eat nor drink for three days. And when they got him to Ananias' house, 
he was baptized. And he became Paul. And Paul is the apostle, the chief apostle that we know, who we follow a lot of contextual stuff within the New Testament, all because of a new thing that happened on the road where he didn't think he was going. You see, sometimes God will shift our plan. And we got to be flexible in the shifting, which means some of us got to stop getting agitated and irritated when God start doing things and he don't allow things to happen the way we want it because some of us are so very particular. We are so strategic minded that we have A, B, C, D, E listed out. And the list is listed. We even have eight. We done got so good, we got ages beside it. By the time I'm 45, because I made some mistakes in 25. So by the time I'm 45, I need to have X amount in my 401k. By the time I'm 60, I'm going to fly to Paris, but I can't go there. Hold on, let me back up, because I got it. Let me see. That's 15 years in between that. Okay, so I'm going to go to Paris when I'm 50. And when I get to Paris, I ain't going to spend but $2,000 while I'm there. Um, let me say 15 in case something happened while I'm there. I got 500 bus buffing money. We get so particular that if something doesn't go that way, we throw a conniption. We get attitudes with people and be like, what you looking at? And they don't know you were supposed to go to Paris last year. They did not know. And you mad because they went to Paris and looking at them. They don't even want to know where, how they go to Paris. <laughs> Me and some of my coworkers, these people go more than we do. And we work every day. How you do it? Please share the plan. I need to know. Gas is high. Help me out. <laughs> And you be, don't act like we ain't done it. You done seen somebody post something and you like, now how in the world? Where they get that money from? Help me out. And we are checking for something that God is saying, get out of that. They ain't got nothing to do with you. Get back over here. Get back over here. And your plan, throw it down because that ain't my plan. That ain't my will for you. You ain't supposed to be there right now. You need to be right here. You need to be in my face. So that when you do go there, you remain in me. You don't go overseas and all of a sudden you come back and you cussing like a sailor because you went over there and picked up a spirit because you didn't know how to maintain your salvation. You didn't know that no matter where you are, I am there. He said, the psalmist wrote in, in Psalms, I believe, 31, somewhere around there, he said, if I make my bed in hell, you are there. So God's everywhere. The question is, are we there with him? Are we presently in the now with him? On this morning, I leave you with this. As we are in the new now, you will need to take a look at the former for just a moment just to make sure you did the last thing God told you to do, to make sure that you've killed anything that resides in you that could hinder you from the new thing God is doing. Because if we haven't killed that old thing, that new thing won't matter. We'll kill the new thing too. And we'll kill it by accident. Because we did not deal with the former thing. And once you dealt with that former thing, don't go back to it. Don't look at it again. Go forward so that you can experience the new, the new, new. In the words of Ty Tribute, new, 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 everything new, new, new. You want everything new. Because see, if he gives you the new now, and you hadn't dealt with that, you'll tear it all up. See, some of us don't know the new may not look like what we want it to look like. So if I gave Brother Holly the keys 
to that 2023 I got out there. It's got mileage on it, but it's still new to him. But if you expecting a 2023 with zero on it, you're not going to be grateful for the one that got a couple miles on it. And you're going to say, this ain't new. Well, it ain't new, but, you know. And God is looking like, what you, what you mean it ain't new? You ain't had it. You didn't have that. We miss the new because of our expectations. And when our expectations don't meet what God is doing, we assume it's not for us. It's not of him. And he's saying it's new. This is new. This is something you ain't never seen, you ain't never experienced. This is why you feel like it's not for you. It goes against what you know. It goes against what you're used to, what you're used to regulating, those things that you're used to just getting up and doing out of habit. And I'm breaking it. So because I'm doing it, you're frowning upon what I'm doing. Why would you do that? And that's exactly what we do. We begin mummering and complaining about what it is. And this is why he said at the end of 43, I have disregarded Israel. I have discredited you because you're not grateful in what I'm doing. You don't see me, so you don't thank me. You don't see it the way you wanted it. So you automatically assume it's not of me. He said, when I told you in all things, give thanks. So instead of us thanking him, even in the bad times, in the times that we think, God, why me? Why this happened? We're complaining. And he understands we're human, but we shouldn't stay in the complaint. I found myself there this week saying, God, why, why this got everybody help? This is my day, I guess. And I complained and mumbled and complained and mumbled. So I got to the end of the day and realized I ain't do nothing but complain and mumble today. And was doing it to myself because I done locked myself in the office. Walking to the bathroom. <laughs> and was doing it and it was the next day before I realized what God was doing in that situation and I said oh my God I missed that I missed it because it did not come the way that I thought it was going to come and I had to go back and repent and I said God I'm so sorry Forgive me, Lord, because I wasted a whole day of time focused on something that was really a distraction. In the words of Pastor Williams, a smoke screen that was put up. And I missed an opportunity to give God glory for something that did happen. Don't miss what the new is now. Because we're dwelling on yesterday. We're dwelling on yesteryears. Because if that's what you want, you can have it. But the rest of us going to move on. We'll see you in the upper room. We gone. It's takeoff season. It is takeoff season. It's time to flap your wings. It's time to come out the nest. It's time to start flying, baby. Mama Bird been dropping the worms in your mouth long enough. Been moving the sticks around now to make you uncomfortable so that you can fly with the other eagles. Because if you don't fly, you're going to die. You will not stay stagnant another moment. Focus on that. You got to come up higher and you got to come to now. Now has been waiting on most of us. It's been before us. 
And it's here. It's here. So on this morning, I beg of you, get into the now. To the now, the new that God is doing now. Because this new won't be new always. This new is going to get old. And it's going to be another new. And another new. And another refreshing. And if you don't get where it is now, you're going to be 10 years back. And everybody else is going to be 20 years forward. The days of dragging the saints who say that we are in Christ, say that we are no longer babes, that's over. Got fed up with it. It's time to start being who we say we are, doing what we say we do, loving the one we say we love. It is time to do it, saints. Let it go. Let it go. I, 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 you know, I'm trying to figure out a better way to bring up stuff other than songs, but I'm a song person. The songwriter said, I think I better let it go. Looks like another love, TKO. Everybody know Teddy Pendergrass. All right. It's time to let it go. Because that's knocked out. It's knocked out. You can't keep doing it. If we keep doing it, we will not, we will not, listen, not in OT, see the new that God is doing. So there are three letter, three letter words, old, new, old, new, now. Deal with the old so you can see the new. Now. Now. So, Father, we thank you on this day, God. God, we thank you for the word that has come forward, God. We thank you, God, that we are not going to be stagnant, God. God, that we understand that the new is now, God. There is a freshness, God. God, there is a fresh anointing, God, that you have for us, God. God, there is a newness that you're pouring out amongst your saints, God. God, there is a new wind, God. There is a new way, God. God, that you are giving us, God. There are new instructions, God, that you have, God, to download for your people, God. God, there are new places you're taking us, God. New elevations in you, God. God, and that we can no longer, God, stay, God, in the places that we're our, God. God, we can't stay in those places physically, God. We can no longer stay mentally bound, God. We can no longer stay spiritually bound, God. But, God, we have to move with your spirit, God. So, Father, on the small morning, God. We ask, God, that you would come in like a mighty rushing wind, God. God, and that you would do as they sung, God, and overflow, God. God, that you would overfill us, God. God, that whenever, God, we look at where we've been, God, God, we will be able to say, God, I did the last thing you asked me to do, God. God, on this morning, we ask, God, that you would be looking at us, Father God, and you would be pleased, Father God, with where we are, where we're going, God. And God, we wouldn't be so quick to be places, God, that we would miss what you're doing right now, God. God, that we would be in the present moment with your Father. Father, that we wouldn't be living in the past, God, that we wouldn't be living so quick in the future, God. But God, we want to be in the present with you, God. Now, Father, we ask on this morning, God, God, if we've done any of these things, God, God, if we have kept ourselves, God, away from you, God, if we've been disobedient, God, to what you've been leading us to do, God, we repent on this morning, God. Father, we ask that you would forgive us, God, and God, that you would give us the directions, God, that we may follow them completely, God. God, not according to our will, God, but according to yours, Father. Father, on this morning, we thank you, God. God, that you don't keep our sins, God, listed for us, God. But God, you are a forgiver of our sins. Father, we thank you on this morning, God. That God, on today, we know, God, that the new thing you're doing, that it is before us, God. God, there's nothing, God, in our past that can take us where we need to go, God. Because, Father, you said that 
those who are in Christ, that we are a new creature, God. And behold, all things have passed away, God. So, Father, we thank you for the passing of old things, God. God, we thank you that the person we walked in as this morning, God, that that person is being crucified, God, that flesh, God, is being crucified, God. God, that we may be able to serve you better, God. God, that we may be a more effective God. Look, God, of who you are, God. God, that when people see us, God, they don't just see us as who we are, God, but they see us as your people, God. God, take away, God, those things of us, God, that keep us shamed, God. God, for your word says that there is no condemnation, God, in those who are in Christ Jesus, God. So, Father, for those who are woken in condemnation on this morning, God, God, who are woken in, God, I did this, I did that, God. Let them know on this morning, God, that you love them anyhow, God. And, God, you have a plan for them, God. God, that you had a plan for them, Father, even before they were in their mind mother's womb, God. God, we thank you on this morning, God. God, for chains being broken, God. We thank you on this morning, God, that God people are being delivered on this morning, God. God, we thank you, God, that you're unmasking, God, those things that have been hidden, God, those things, God, that have kept us in the trenches, Father God, that God, you will bring us, God, and you will spring us forward, God, to where we need to be, God. Now, Father, we thank you on this morning, God, that, Father, even the latter house, God, has experienced and they're in the new God. Right now, God, God, what you did on this morning, God, God, as you open the gateway, God, to the now, God, that you've been, God, calling them to, God, the now of this ministry, God, we thank you right now, God, we thank you, God. Oh, God, we thank you, God. We thank you, God, that the prayers are being answered, God. We thank you, God, that the pastor, God, that he's been refreshed and restored, God. We thank you right now, God, that his hands are lifted, God. We thank you right now, God, that the people's hands are lifted, God. We thank you right now, God, for what you're going to do in here, God. We thank you, God, that we don't look upon the numbers, God, but we look, God, to the one who will increase the numbers, God. We look to the one, God, who will bring in the souls, God, as we, God, do what you tell us to do, God. Now, Father, we thank you that this ministry, God, has been, been called, God, to different, God. We thank you, God, that the new thing that you're doing here, God, God, that it's for your glory, God. We thank you, God, that this ministry has brought people out of the Maury Clay, God. God, that people have been set free and delivered in this house, God. But, God, there is more to come, God. And for that, we say thank you, God. We thank you, God, for how you saturated, God, even the praise and worship team on this morning, God. God, the minister of music, God. And, Father, we pray, God, that you would even ever increase them, God. God, we thank you for the prophetic flow, God, that will come out of their mouths, God. We thank you right now, God. God, that even as a pastor, God, preaches, God, you will begin to give them new songs, God. God, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus, God. God, that even their stance will be different, God. God. God, even as they praise you, God, it will be different, God. God, we even thank you right now, God, for an ignition, God, a fire, God, amongst your people, God. God, that those, God, of us, God, who are in the seats, God, that we won't be able to contain ourselves, God. Oh, God, we thank you, God. Oh, God, we thank you, God. God, we thank you for the media team, God. Father, we pray that you would bless them even the more, God. God, we thank you, God, for reaching new levels, God. God, new streaming places, God. God, we thank you, God, that where they are, God, that, God, you would take them to other places, God. We thank you right now, God, for new platforms, God. God, we thank you for new ways, God, God, of reaching people, God. God, we thank you, God, that where we are, God, is not the end, God, but it is the beginning, God. We thank you, Father. 
Father, we thank you for the deacons in the house, God. The deaconesses, God. God, we thank you right now for the elders, God. God, we thank you for the prophets in the house, God. God, we thank you right now, God, for the ministers in the house, God. The evangelists that are in the house, God. God, we thank you for the children in the house, God. God, for how you're even going to raise them up, God. God, to be those, God, who are mighty in you, God. God, we thank you right now, God, for the new facility, God. God, we praise you in advance, God, for what you will do, God. For state-of-the-art equipment, God. God, we thank you right now, God. God, for paid in full, God. God, we thank you right now, God, for a quickening, God. In the name of Jesus, God. We thank you, God. For sending kingdom financiers, God. God, for allowing people in this house, God, to be kingdom financiers. God, we thank you, God. God, we thank you right now, God. That what you're doing, God. God, that we're going to be a part of it, God. God, that we are in it, God. And Father, as we see, God, what you're doing, God. That we would join in it, God. God, the same way you said, God, we joined in the sin of our ancestors, God. God, let us join, God, in the newness of you, God. God, give us just as much zeal, God, and tenacity, God. God, to be able to run the race that you set before us, God. Father, we thank you, God. God, we pray for those on Facebook this morning, God. God, those who will watch this at a later time, God, even on YouTube, God. We thank you, God, that this word will be settled in their hearts, God. Father, we thank you, God, for renewed people, God. People who walk in the now, God. Knowing, God, that you've delivered them, God, from the past, God. God, we thank you, God, that everything we need done, you did it when we accepted Jesus Christ. So, Father, we thank you for that. God, we thank you all this morning. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That our praise will no longer be the same, God. God, that our worship will no longer be the same, God. Our prayer life will no longer be the same, God. The way we read your word will no longer be the same, God. God, the way that we hear you will no longer be the same, God. God, unclog our spiritual ears, God. So that they that have an ear may hear, God, what you are saying to your church. Mm. Father, we thank you on today, God, that we will never, ever, ever, God, be the same, God. We won't go back to former things, God. But we will move into the now that you are in thank you God now father we thank you again God for this day we praise you and we bless your holy name in Jesus name it is so amen and your ladder will be greater than your past you will be blessed more than you could ask despite all that has been done the best is yet to come for your ladder will be greater your ladder will be greater your ladder will be greater than the rest Oh, your ladder will be greater than the past. And you will be blessed more than you could ask. Despite all that has been done, the best is yet to come. And your ladder will be greater. And your ladder will be greater. And your ladder will be greater than the rest. 
Cause all things are possible. They are possible. They are possible. Oh, they are possible. And all things are possible. They are possible. Possible. Oh, they are possible. And your ladder, and your ladder will be greater. And your ladder will be greater. And your ladder will be greater than the rest. That song says your ladder will be greater than the rest. You are in Ladder House Ministries. You will be blessed more than you can ask. And despite all that has been done, the best is yet to come. And your ladder will be greater than the rest. Hallelujah. So Ladder House, welcome to your new now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And for those of you who are tuned in with us, the best is yet to come for you. And I pray that God would bless you out there in Facebook land. And if you are going to give, I believe the giving is across the screen as to ways that you can give. Please sow into what has given unto you on today. Woo! There's a newness, a newness, a newness, a newness now, 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 now. Mm. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. So we thank you again for joining us on today. I'm going to ask, Pastor, if you have anything. Amen, amen. Whew. So on today, God has met us indeed. May not have been a jump around message, but it was a message that I know I needed. I needed it. And for those who... This word has blessed you on this morning. Take it with you. Run with it. Allow it to sink into you. Go back and read the scripture for yourself and allow God to speak to your spirit about what your new is. Let him purge that old so that that new can take root. Because I'm telling you, it's going to be awesome, y'all. The new is awesome. It's awesome. It's awesome. The new is beyond our level of expectation. All because we're in the now of God. Amen. 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 So now unto him who is able to carry out his purpose and do super abundantly more than all we ask or think. Infinitely beyond our greatest prayers, hopes, or dreams, according to his power that is at work within us. To him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you.